Aaron Sampson here to talk about what we've learned from the Battlefield Hardline beta. Battlefield Hardline feels like the best, and I am saying this intentionally, that Battlefield 4 can be. Visceral has done a fantastic job of wrestling the Frostbite engine into the most workable state that it can. In the end though, it's hard to shake the feeling that it's the engine holding the creativity of this team back. The good. Visceral's beta maps, Dust Bowl, Bank Job, and Downtown are purpose-built for their modes, and that's awesome. In Battlefield 4, rush crates were haphazardly placed around the map, making for bland, sometimes flat-out unfair gameplay. Many times, conquest points seem to have no rhyme or reason. Why am I defending this ditch on Caspian border? Who cares? Dust Bowl, in contrast, hosts both Hotwire and Conquest, and really excels at both. Visceral looked at what vehicles, dust storms, or lack thereof, an objective placement leads to the best player flow. By flow, I mean moving players into each other at a regular and entertaining pace. And also I'll give credit where it's due in removing jets, which refocuses combat on the ground where the game shines. But I do understand that this might upset Battlefield 2 fans. Visceral has also massively improved the unlock tree with a cash purchasing system. Players can use any class to rack up cash in order to buy gear or weapons for any other class, which removes huge barriers for people who love class gear but can't get past starting weapons. Bolt action sniper rifles, I'm looking at you. Weapons in Hardline are fewer but more unique, and the attachments aren't the same for all weapons. I opened up a battle pack and actually got excited because the voucher inside let me choose which weapons to upgrade on my own. You can also purchase battle packs through in-game cash instead of the extremely out of touch with reality real-world cash required in Battlefield 4. And lastly, hit detection and feedback is so much better than previous battlefields. I finally know through a combination of distinct hit markers for body, critical, and vehicle hits where my bullets are going. When I get taken down, I know where the fatal shot landed, and I can adjust my playstyle. Overall, shooting just feels way better than in Core Battlefield 4. Now for the cons. As I said before, Frostbite is just working so hard to make Battlefield Hardline work. It can be seen in the jitters when you run too close to people, in the vaulting problems, in stiff car handling, bland wall textures, the list goes on. Go through a trip mine or get hit by a grenade launcher in a car and watch Frostbite use so much brain power to figure out what just happened. When I played Titanfall, when I played Destiny, I rarely question the engine, and I find myself doing it all the time here. Battle Log. It's still the worst, it still erases loadouts, and good luck finding out how to actually use battle packs and boosters, and it requires constant updates. Frostbite will literally not let players kit out between rounds, and for PC players, you still have to start a round in order to do your initial key configurations. I'd also be negligent in not recognizing that to a lot of fans, this still feels like a mod. People who spent over $100 between Battlefield 4 and Premium and felt burned by it. Convincing them to spend another $60 plus optional premium again is gonna be an uphill battle. Overall, I'm reserving my judgment till March 17th. We need to see the full build of the full game. It is possible the beta isn't utilizing the latest Frostbite code. I really like Battlefield Hardline. I think it's a step in the right direction of doing more games like 1943, smaller in scope and more focused on a specific segment of the Battlefield community. But I also can't shake the feeling that Frostbite needs to be sacrificed to let Battlefield grow.